Kendall, uh, you know, what kind of went in there in the last five or six minutes? It seemed like you, you got hot and uh, you kind of take what the defense gave you, or is it one of those things where it just like you finally started executing with the shots that were so available for you that finally came through? Yeah, uh, like you said, just taking taking what the defense was giving me. Um, we have a great deal of confidence in, in each player on this team. Um, we put a lot of work in. Uh, we shoot a lot of balls in practice, so um, it was just my night tonight. Lindy, was this kind of a frustrating night offensively? Because it felt like you guys were able to get the shots you want. And for most of the game, they weren't going in. Yeah, we haven't uh, really gone against like a matchup zone uh, a lot in practice. And even in games, most of the time, we just run man. Um, you know, we try to get to the free throw line. You know, we only shot, I think, one tonight, which is incredible. Um, so, yeah, it was a little bit frustrating, but we just try to stay focused. Was it nice having Jeff out there to start the game, his first start in Gallagher Ivory this season? Yeah, I mean, he's been playing real good, um, playing real aggressive for us. That's what we need him to do. Um, you know, coach been preaching for him to rebound, and once he rebounds, he'll get a lot more like better looks offensively. He got 11 rebounds tonight, um, so yeah, it's, it's great having him start. And at halftime, what did Coach Boynton tell you all to kind of motivate you with the tie score and some of the three point shots struggling in the first half? Um, I mean, he was just really preaching um, how big uh, of a game it is for us. Um, obviously, coming off a big win. Uh, versus Florida State, he didn't want us to really um, dwell on that too much. And, you know, it's very easy, you know, when you beat a top 25 team to kind of, you know, take a step back. But, um, you know, he said all great teams, um, you know, go out and prepare, you know, for the next game as if, you know, um, it's the last game. So we kind of came out slow and kind of got on, got on us at, at halftime and we came out uh, second half and played a lot better. What do you guys feel like was the momentum shift in that second half for you? Playing, playing the right way, playing more aggressive, um, staying locked in on defense. Um, I think that's our thing. We're, we're a really good uh, defensive team. So uh, when we get after it defensively, um, a lot of things come easier for us on the offensive end. When Mitch had that play where he dove across the floor and then I think flicked it to you and then you found Brandon for a bucket, put you guys up four, and then from there you kind of went on a run after that timeout. Did that kind of energize you guys? Uh, you know, he saved me because I tried to make the pass to him and it got tipped. And he dove on my ball. It would have been a turnover on me. So uh, shout out to Mitch for that. But I felt like that got us going, just seeing somebody dive on the floor. Um, you know, he's always that, that one guy, you know, with last game taking the charge. Uh, you can always count on him. But that really got us going. And just in general, with the team lineup being more complete now that you have Nate Cooper out there and as the season goes on, how do you think the team chemistry has improved or how do you think you all are gelling better? Um, I mean, we're definitely going to continue to grow as a team. Um, like I've said many times, we really like each other. Like guys genuinely like each other on and off the court. So when you got a group of guys like that, um, it'll just translate. You know, how we you know hang out with each other off the court will be, you know, how we look after each other, cover for each other, um, make up for each other on the court. There was one possession where you guys kept getting offensive rebound, but you had two pretty open threes. You missed them both, and then you got the ball back and made a layup. I'm not sure if you remember it or not. Mm -hmm. But where did you find – the confidence to come back later and still take those threes? Oh, I'm going to keep going. Uh, Wes Westbrook is my favorite player. So just that mindset of always being in attack mode, always trying to make a play for your team, you know, always trying to, you know, give and do something to help the team win um, is kind of my mindset that I take. So I missed the first two. I was kind of upset. But then, like you said, Mitch kept covering, kept getting rebounds. Um, and I seen the lane, so I decided, you know, just uh, if I wasn't going to make, make any threes, I might as well try to get a layup. Linda, you mentioned Mitch taking the charge, but you took one tonight and had two on Saturday. And I think uh, Coach said you're leading the team in them. How much pride do you kind of take in, in being able to get in position for that? Um, I mean, uh, I have a lot of pride in it. But I also look up to Mitch because he's, uh, ever since I've been here, he's always been the one doing it. So I, I try to follow in his footsteps, just try to help the team out. momentum on your side this final little stretch before conference play, uh, conference play starts for you guys? Um, it's very important. Um, like Coach, Coach always says, we, we're not giving any wins back. So um, we're going to keep, you know, playing basketball the right way. 
um, continue to practice hard, and when the game comes, we're going to prepare the right way and hopefully come out and execute to get a W. Lindy, last year you guys had this freshman kind of thrown in the fire when this game at Tulsa. Uh, how have you seen you guys, especially the sophomore class, grow since that win last year? Um, we've grown a lot. You know, that game, it felt like, I mean, during the game, it didn't feel like anything. But after seeing that, it just it brought us, like, closer. Um, so it was big. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. I'm glad Junior Ito's a senior. <laughs> Man, it's like going to the dentist. He's really good. Um, and obviously, he um, he sets the tone for their team on the offensive end. We knew he would give us a lot of challenges, uh, specifically when you match that with the fact that we've made the change and gone a little bit smaller to start. Um, and, uh, you know, he carried them quite a bit during the game. I thought our defense was rock solid for the most part. Um, their their defense kept us on our heels for most of the first half, and, and we played very, very slow trying to figure out <clears throat> what to do and how to attack it. And that's on me. i got to do a better job of, of presenting my team with a better plan of attack. Um, I was a little bit disappointed in our focus. Um, you know, for the first time this year, in the last 48 hours, people have been telling them that they're actually good. And, you know, you, people don't always handle that the best. Um, and it's something we need to learn from because we, we want to have more success and we got to make sure that we follow that up with proper preparation as, as the other games come because I told the guys in the locker room after Friday and I don't look ahead, you don't get to start off slow and figure it out at the end. <laughs> so um, with that being said, I'm proud of the win and we look forward to getting better from it. I said all along, Kendall's a guy I got a lot of faith in uh, because he cares uh, about the right things. He first and foremost wants to win. Uh, no one spends more time in my office watching film than he does. No one asks what I want more than he does because he, he wants to be the floor general. He wants to be the leader on the court and do the things that, that I feel is necessary for us to win. So uh, to see him have some personal success uh, makes me feel good that the work he's putting in is is showing up on a stat sheet because that validates it for some guys. Um, but at the same time, it's always first and foremost about our team success. You talked about improving confidence through a win over Florida State. Does it also improve confidence to go through a first half where you kind of shoot cold a little bit, but then come out in the second half and really assert yourself in the last five minutes of the game where, where it's winning time? Yeah, I mean, I got to figure out the shooting thing. I mean, <clears throat> you know, we're 11 games in and other than the first half, Austin P. when I told him not to shoot threes anymore, which that might have been what did it in. I mean, we haven't really shot the ball great. Uh, but I do believe we have good shooters. Um, we didn't shoot the ball great the other day. I mean, we only shot like 34% and like 32 from three. Um, but our defense has been the thing that's carried us. Um, it's been a point of emphasis since the day I got the job. And it's the thing that will have to carry us until we start shooting the ball better. Man, I don't know. I've never seen it before. I've been involved with the game of basketball since I was four years old. And, I mean, high school, AAU, college, I've never watched the team shoot one free throw, especially at home. Um, and certainly, I mean, definitely don't win when that happens. But um, that definitely had something to do with them. Um, but at the same time, I think it was the way we didn't attack. We didn't play in attack mode. We played very passive uh, we settle for a lot of threes, which is what they want to do. They they force teams to shoot threes, and sometimes they count on you missing them, and we missed them in the first half. Luckily, we made enough in the second half to pull away. You said the last couple of weeks that you were going to need a reason or like something that needed to change for you to start, Jeff. What was that, and how do you think you played tonight? You know, as a coach, my job is to evaluate what's best for our team, uh, and I thought that that's what our team needed at the moment. I thought that may be what Jeff needed. He hadn't been playing well. Um, and so I had to really, really kind of look inside and, and say, I mean, don't don't just be stubborn about this because it's not about just doing what you've done for doing what you've done's sake. Um, 
every game I got to evaluate what's going to give our team the best chance to have success. Uh, and putting Jeff in the lineup has certainly helped him. He's played better the last two games. There's no denying that. Um, I still think that his rebounding makes a big impact on that. I mean, he got a double-double tonight, which meant he went to the glass. Um, so, again, I, I don't know if it was some one thing. It's, it's more as me just kind of looking inward and saying, are you doing the best thing for your team? And if not, then what's a way you can change? And giving Jeff a chance to start was one of those things. I know you said before you like to take things game by game, but looking into the future a little bit, do you think starting Jeff is something you're going to continue to do, or are you just going to take it one at a time and see how that goes? Yeah, I mean, again, I, I don't like changing lineups just for the sake of changing. I mean, you know, Jeff's deal was unique. He wasn't playing well. And there was no denying that. And you could tell he was visibly frustrated in the Wichita State game. And so I, I made those comments without the advantage of having gone and watched the film and having conversations about where he was mentally. Uh, but after that, I thought about it for a couple of days and figured, you know, let's give this a chance and see if this helps him. And I think it has. Uh, as far as changing again, I don't know. I mean, I will have to have a, a real reason to change. Um, I think we're in a good place right now. This team right now, as you finish out this last little bit before conference play begins, I, mean, I think it's obvious that our commitment to defense is there, um, and that's one of the things that I, you know, take a lot of pride in is my team being the hardest playing team on the court when we play, and I think we've done that for the most part. Even in the games that we haven't played our best, you know, I thought in the Wichita State game we were the harder playing team. We didn't play as smart as they did, and we certainly didn't execute as well as they did. But I thought we played really, really hard. I thought we played really unselfishly, and that's something this team's done consistently. Um, the other one thing is missing is we haven't made shots. Uh, we haven't had two or three guys make shots in one night, and um, I'm confident that they'll that day will come. Coach, I know last year this, this sophomore class was freshman. They're kind of thrown in the fire at Tulsa. The, uh, Jawan was out, maybe Phil too. How, how have you seen them improve? On, how much more confident are they now? I mean, a year later. I think part of what happens is, as a freshman, you're still relying on your high school habits, and they don't work <laughs> at this level, especially. Uh, and it's hard for kids to understand that because they've always had success playing a certain way. Um, and you're asking them to slow down when it feels like they need to play faster. To them, it feels that way. I, I, I did it. You know, I came into college and thought, well, I'll just. I'll just go faster than everybody, and maybe I'll get myself out of trouble this way. Well, actually, you got to slow down so you can see how things are developing. Young kids just don't have the capacity usually to do that, uh, which is why it's always remarkable that some freshmen are able to have great success uh, because the game is so drastically different from high school. Um, but you see a kid go into a sophomore year, he's got a totally different presence about himself. Uh, and I see that noticeably with, with all those guys. You know, Lindy, for example, we play pretty much – at every position offensively and defensively. He guards one through four. Uh, we put Cam on in a lot of different situations. And obviously, B.A.'s learning how to play with the ball in his hands and off the ball as well. So um, for those guys, it's been just a natural progression from freshman to sophomore year where the game slows down and they can understand a little bit better. This wasn't a, a big numbers game for Mitch, but he made two plays in the second half, the one where he dove on the floor, and then there was another where he sort of forced Wheeler to step out of bounds right in front of your bench, chasing a rebound. How, I mean, it was a close game up until that point, and from there you guys went on a run. How much did you think he kind of sparked that? I, I really don't. I don't have enough words to describe how important he is to our team. I really don't. Um, he does all those things, and he does it every day. And some days I ask him, hey, do you need a break in practice? And he's like, nope. I'm just going to keep fighting through it. And, you know, I know he's, you know, dealing with some aches and pains, but he, he cares so much about this team and having success and trying to go out the right way. Uh, he takes a great, he takes great pride in putting on that uniform. His parents both went to school here, and it means a lot to him um, to, to play well and represent our fans, uh, which is one of the reasons why I try to fight for him uh, to get a little bit more recognition, even though his numbers, I mean, even tonight, he gets five rebounds and, and eight points. and. Some people just look at the Bosco and say, oh, another night where Mitchell Solomon wasn't very productive. And, and I'm looking at the film, and I'm like, he stopped that guy from scoring. He stopped that guy from scoring. This guy got the rebound, but it was because he blocked out. You know, as a coach, those things were invaluable. Um, and so what he means to our team is everything. I mean, he is the rock that we're built around. For you, 
11 games in, I know there's one more non-conference game, but just for you as a head coach, you know, what do you kind of learn about yourself dealing with the chemistry issues and shifting lineups and everything? What do you kind of learn yourself as a head coach in non-conference? I, I mean, I, I don't know about any chemistry issues. We haven't really had any of those. Uh, I think I'm just learning how to adapt from game to game. Um, you know, you can't assume that guys are going to be ready. Um, and you got to be willing to play guys that are playing the best. You know, Brandon Aver didn't play that much on Saturday. He was playing well enough tonight that I kind of let him play a little bit longer or ride it out with him. Um, and I think that's something that I need to continue to evolve in and not just being stuck in this is how I want it to be done. I've got to evaluate the game and coach based off what's happening on court. You guys were picked at the bottom of the Big 12. Just, do you feel like you're still going to – I do this. Do you feel like you're going to outplay that potential or just be better this season with what you've seen in this NOF conference? I have no idea. I really don't. Um, I know we got a game Friday that, that we have to be prepared for. Um, and I know that my team's going to fight as hard as they can every night. This is a really, really hard league. I think every team in our league is close to the top 50 in most of the metrics that people use, which is I mean, it's unheard of not for a whole league now. I mean, and um, so, you know, it'll be a lot of sleepless nights starting December 28th or whatever it is. But um, we'll be fine because I believe my guys will continue to fight for the right things and try to build the culture that we want right now. Thanks, Thank you, Mike.